right, hello and welcome to another expert interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Jeffrey Lipsius, who is in up in LA, correct, Jeffrey? Yes, it's great to be on this show. Yeah, and I'm here in San Diego. And yes, uh, it's a rainy San Diego. There's something to turn up for the books, right? Our our two one of our two days of rain per year decided to come today. Um, Jeffrey is the president and founder of Selling to the Point, uh, and today what we wanted to talk about was coaching, right? But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, okay, here's another conversation about how to coach salespeople, but this is different because what Jeffrey talks about is how to coach your customer. Okay, so Jeffrey, what's what's that all about, coaching your customer? Because that's probably a little bit of a surprise to people. Yeah, I'm proposing that salespeople take a lot more time looking at their customers' buying performance rather than their own selling performance. Because when you think about it, as a salesperson, you could perhaps have just a lackluster performance. But if your customer is sharp and they know what they want and they have a clear goal in mind, they could buy the product even if the salesperson doesn't have the greatest selling performance. So really the customer buying performance is very important. By the same token, a salesperson can say all the right things. And yet if the customer is confused, if they're unclear, if they don't have confidence in themselves, they may end up not buying the product in spite of the salesperson's great performance. So what I want to talk about today is coaching your customers to be uh, have a better buying performance. So um so how do you go about that because let's face it when in most um sales prospect uh you know relationship right um there is a feeling that there are two distinct roles and distinct perspectives in the room right so how do you cross over to the point where you can actually help the customer with their decision making process Yeah well the the first thing is involving mindset Because a salesperson really needs to turn their focus around to the customer's point of view rather than their own point of view. And I'll give you an example. If I talk to a a typical salesperson about the role of confidence, the role of trust, and they're going to say, oh, that's very important. I need to earn my customer's trust. What I'm proposing is for salespeople to turn their thinking around. What about the customer's self-trust? What about the customer's trust in their uh, ability to make a good decision? Now, think about it. If the customer doesn't trust themselves to decide if they can trust you, <laughs> you're not going to get the sale. You're not going to earn the customer's trust. Right. That This is internal trust. It's self-trust. Mm-hmm. And this is just one of many examples of how salespeople need to turn the mindset around to what customers need in order to make the best decision. Because really, at the end of the day, salespeople are in the decision business, and our success depends upon the decision-making of other people. Mm-hmm. A customer, um, well, a salesperson doesn't get a sale unless the customer first decides that salesperson's going to get the sale. Correct. So, so right. So there's there's a couple of interesting things going on here, right? So, number one, uh, one of the biggest reasons people lose business today, and uh, you know, I and I think it has. I mean, it's always been a factor, but it's become more of a factor, I think, since the last recession is um, the reluctance to make a decision. So your biggest competitor is often no decision as opposed to losing a sale to someone else. You, the, the prospect uh, just decides not to move ahead. And I think that plays into what you're talking about because there's a lot there's a lot riding often on a B2B purchase, right, for the for the uh, the buyer themselves. Like it can be career enhancing if it works out. It can be career limiting if it doesn't. So how does a salesperson help make uh, the customer confident in in their buying decision, in the buying criteria, in, in the ability to actually move to a decision? Well, there's quite a few things that you could do, but I think the main one is to really have the customer clear about their own goals. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised 
how confused and unclear customers are about what they really want. Are they really in touch with their needs? Uh, customers these days are very distracted and they have tweets to get back to and they have uh, uh, instant messages and people are constantly trying to get a hold of them in real time with so many demands and so many choices these days with the internet that customers have a really hard time navigating the decision process. And so I think the first thing a salesperson can do is help coach the customers to be clear on, on their goal, what they really want, what they really need. And that's going to be a lot more uh a lot more easily the salespeople would, would be able to sell the product to the customer based on what the customer wants. But first, you have to get clear, what does the customer want? Sometimes they don't know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, as you know, as, as buyers, we we end up a little bit like kids in candy stores, right? You know, we If we're, we're, we're going to buy something and then we say, oh, because we wanted to do this and then we wanted to do that and it'd be great if it could do this. And all of our goals are not created equally, right? And therefore, I think to your point, it's the job of the salesperson to help the, the prospect really drill down into what are the priority things that they're trying to achieve, right? Yeah, that's right. As a matter of fact, my, my book contains a lot of different coaching questions that salespeople could ask customers to help them get more clear. But I think it's important for the salesperson to be able to convey that their purpose is really to help the customer make the best decision, not necessarily for the customer to, to buy their product, because, well, when you and I are customers, mm -hmm. why would we want to talk to a salesperson? We want to talk to a salesperson because we feel it's going to help us make the best decision. Yes. So then that salesperson becomes a team member. Yes. And then I'm working as a team with customers together to find out uh, what's going to be in the customer's best interest. And that's really where, as a salesperson, I can add value. Mm -hmm. So that requires, obviously, I mean, we talked about like, getting the confidence in the buyer, but that requires a level of confidence too, right, in the salesperson that they're able to, um, you know, maybe be a little bit more transparent, be a little bit more open, uh, be willing to, uh, you know, discuss things that may on the surface not serve them. Well, I would more say instead of confidence for the salesperson, I would say focus from the salesperson really requires the salesperson's attention because we, when it comes to performance, we perform by learning mm -hmm. and we learn by observing. So the more observant salespeople are, the more they can learn what their customers need and what their customers are going to be receptive to hearing about which allows the salesperson to select and modify a presentation in order to make it most compelling to that customer based on the customer's values and beliefs that we've learned through observation. Mm -hmm. So getting back to your point, I think if a salesperson lacks confidence, they're going to be distracted. Mm -hmm. And a distracted salesperson is going to be a less observant salesperson, right. which means they won't learn as much, which means they won't perform as well. And so a lot of it then also boils down to the age old, uh, you know, skill of actually asking good questions and, and then listening to the answers, right? Listening and processing and validating what the customer is saying and then making good uh, observations and suggestions based on that. Yeah, the customer is also learning while you're learning. Mm -hmm. So a salesperson could ask a question. With a question, you're not only gathering information, but with a question, you're also guiding the customer's attention. Mm -hmm. So perhaps you as a salesperson know that this customer needs to consider something that they're really overlooking in order to make that decision. Well, you can ask the customer a question that points their attention in that particular direction. And the reason it needs to be a question is because 
the customer's decision process is internal. Mm-hmm. It's that customer. So their attention always needs to be in, inward, inside of them. You know, you, you don't want to be feeling the limelight and taking over the conversation to the point where you're a distraction from mm-hmm. the customer being, uh, you know, looking at themselves and what they want. So when you're asking a question, it it puts the customer's attention back where it really needs to be, which is you know, what's going on for them. Mm-hmm. And do you, do you think sometimes that uh, that um, salespeople don't give uh, prospects enough time to process and think about some of the things they talked about? You know that they tend to like be too quick to dive in with their next next question, or even that they are afraid of having any si- gaps of silence. And let's face it, I mean, if if you ask me a question, I may need a couple of seconds to think about, hmm, that's an interesting question, and you think about that. But a lot of salespeople tend to try and fill the gaps all the time, right? Oh, a- a- absolutely. This is another example of where I'm suggesting the mindset of turning your attention around. Mm-hmm. So the, the salesperson is thinking, you know, this customer, I want to get to this customer's decision. And that's why the salesperson is rushing to get to a decision. Well, turn your thinking around. What about the customer's own internal decision momentum? Mm-hmm. See, the customer is also rushing to a decision. And the salesperson needs to slow that process down so the customer can really assess, is this the best product for me? And and what exactly are the implications for me of what this salesperson is suggesting? Customers, unfortunately, one of the problems is that they just rush to a decision, which sometimes could be an uninformed decision. I mean, telemarketers encounter this all the time when you're calling up a customer you say hi i'm from this company and they hang up mm-hmm. well why did they hang up because the customer made a a uh, hasty decision that whatever you have to say is not going to be of value mm-hmm. and they hang up on you okay that is an uninformed decision that was made too quickly because of the customer's own decision momentum. This is what I'm talking about as the coaching mindset of turning your attention around from what's going on with the salesperson to what's going on with the customer. And so to do that, then you really have to get a good handle on what else is going on, right? With the customer, what's going on in their company, what's going on in their industry, you know, what's going on with them, you know, personally in their in their work dynamics. There's a lot of information you need in order to understand what are the different factors impacting their decision making, right? Yeah. And to be clear about the impact it's having on them, you know, are they, do they feel pressured? Do they need some relief in some way? You know, what's the pain? Then you would get into, you know, what is their pain, which is what salespeople are always looking for. And then offering something that's going to be able to relieve that. Well, we can't offer that until we first learn what that is. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I'm suggesting. The salesperson is the learner, not the teacher. Right, right. And obviously, you know, prescription with a diagnosis is malpractice, right? Yeah, very much so. But how many times do salespeople enter a conversation already thinking why the sales why this customer should buy Mm -hmm. you know these are the reasons why this customer should buy and they're all ready to present these reasons without even having a conversation with the customer the 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 problem with that john is that it it distracts the salesperson Mm -hmm. from paying attention to the customer and by the way this is why the book i wrote on the subject is in the form of a fiction novel. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to show salespeople how you learn from conversation. So I don't teach the principles. They emerge from dialogues between the characters Mm -hmm. because salespeople, I want to show salespeople how you learn from dialogue. 
yeah no, i think that's a, i think that's a that's a great point and it's a great um i mean i have jeffrey's book myself and i absolutely recommend that you read it i think storytelling is uh it's also a skill that a lot of sales people should learn uh because it is a great way of of um of communicating uh, communicating um, points and uh, insights in a very in a way that's very that we're all pretty much receptive to right Jeffrey we're pretty much all receptive to storytelling yeah yeah it just it's a part of the brain that it's recallability and uh really integrates with our beliefs and our values it's it's a much deeper understanding when we hear it from a story all right. Well, we're bumping up the end uh, against the end of our time here, but I wanted to give you a chance, Jeffrey, to tell the the viewers and listeners a little bit more about yourself, about your book, and how they might learn more about you. Well, you can go to my website at sellingtothepoint.com. I'm in the process of finishing up an online course. So besides reading the book, people are actually going to be able to learn this mindset set and learn the skills involved in being your customer's decision coach through a uh, online course with a uh, revolutionary new learning platform. So I, I have that in the works. You'll see that on my website is now uh, sellingtothepoint.com. Excellent. So thank you for this opportunity, John. Yeah, thanks, Jeffrey. This was a great conversation. And as I said, you should check out Jeffrey's book and his new online course. It sounds uh, That sounds really interesting. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Thank you. And we'll see you for another expert interview really soon. Thanks again, Jeffrey. Thank you, John. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.